Hi, this is Michael Borenstein, and this video is a general introduction to the program Comprehensive Meta-Analysis. Our website is www.metaanalysis.com, and before starting, I would uh, like to acknowledge that this program was uh, developed with funding from the National Institutes of Health, including grants from NIMH, NIA, and NIDA, and we're very grateful for their support. This video is intended as a two-minute introduction to the program to give you a general idea of what the program can do. Then we have a series of other videos that explain how to use it in more detail. Uh, the first part in any meta-analysis is going to be to take the summary data from each study and enter it into the program. I have an example over here that uses summary data based on means. The program will also work with uh, uh, binary data, correlational data, and other kinds of data. So for example, over here, for each study, we've entered the mean for each group, the standard deviation, and the sample size. The program immediately, in these yellow cells, computes the effect size, such as a standardized difference in means, or a raw difference in means, as well as the standard error and the variance. So the first step is simply entering the data, and as I'll show you in some of the other videos, you can enter the data uh, using more than 100 different formats. Over here, um, the studies gave us the mean, standard deviation, and sample size, so we entered that. But if some studies gave us simply a t-value and a sample size, we could enter that. If they gave us an odds ratio and a confidence interval, we could enter that, and so on. And additionally, you can mix and match these so that within the same analysis, you can have many different kinds of summary data, including uh, data that might have been generated, uh, some of it by studies that used independent groups, some of it by studies that used paired groups, and some of it by studies that used crossover designs. All of that can be uh, entered into here, and all of it can be included in the same analysis. Once all of the data has been entered, the second thing that you would want to do is to run the analysis. Over here, we're looking at a fairly basic analysis. We have, for each study, the standardized difference in means, lower and upper limit, a p-value. And all of the, that is, is summarized over here on a schematic that gives you the effect size and the confidence interval. Uh, we can use a fixed effect analysis or a random effects analysis or both. So over here, for example, we see the fixed effect estimate and its confidence interval, the random effect estimate and its confidence interval. And we can look at such things as the weight assigned to each study. These are the weights under the fixed effect model. These are the weights under the random effects model. We can look at the residual for each study and various, um, and various other things. Finally, we might want to generate a high-resolution plot and we can do that over here. This is a high resolution plot for the random effects model. And um, we can uh, then say simply export this to PowerPoint. The program will open up a copy of PowerPoint, insert the plot, and then we can run it inside of PowerPoint. Uh, similarly, we could generate a copy of this uh, for Word and send it off to Word. Uh, again, this was meant as a very general introduction to the program. Um, I encourage you to look at the additional videos that explain how to use the program in more detail. Uh, we have some videos that use means as examples, other ones that use proportions as examples or correlations. All of these options are included within the same program. Um, once you have the program, you can enter data in essentially any of these formats, but you probably will find it more helpful to choose the video that corresponds to the formats that you are uh, planning to use. Uh, and uh, additionally, we have other videos that show some of the more advanced features of the program, such as how to perform a subgroups analysis, how to perform a regression, and how to look at publication bias. Um, our, our website is www.metaanalysis.com. 
Uh, my email address is michaelb at metaanalysis.com. And thank you very much for your attention.